So yeah, there is an issue with proxies and a particular card conjurer website, which I've actually reached out to him both via email and on Twitter asking if he wants to sell to me. Uh, they sent him a cease and this actually I will just read you his website um, and then we can talk about proxies. First of all, everyone writing articles, making videos, unless you're an IP attorney, you have no idea what you're talking about. IP attorneys, we are a different breed. So when you go to law school, you can become any type of attorney. You can be a criminal attorney, you can work for prosecution or the defense, right? You can do either one of the two. So you're not, you know, you can do a trust, wills and estates, you can do mergers and acquisitions for corporations. You can do a lot of different things as an attorney when you enter law school, when you graduate and pass your bar exam. One thing that you may not be able to do, and again, this is a very specialized area of law, is patent, IP. So you might be able to do trademarks and copyrights. They are less significant in my opinion, and every patent attorney will agree with me. Or you can be patents. To do patents, you have to pass not one bar exam, like most attorneys, you have to pass two. And to sit at the patent bar exam, you have to have a science, math, or engineering, some type of sciencey technical degree. I passed my patent bar exam when I was 21. So I was a patent agent at 21 at the largest Chinese IP patent law office globally in the New York branch. They have branches all over. Um, I actually went to the Shanghai branch on my first uh, summer at NYU, which then I went to summer class. So I did some work over there uh, in Shanghai, China, uh, beautiful branch. Uh, and the New York branch was amazing, by the way. It was the most beautiful office space I've ever been in, you know, and they definitely showed out the money for that. So I am an actual IP attorney. I'm barred in the state of New York, which means that I am registered as a lawyer there. IP, you can practice anywhere though, because it's a federal. So even though I live in Texas and my bar is up in New York, I'm still a patent attorney for the purposes of applications like PCTs, which is my specialty, which I'm not going to belabor and bore you to death. The articles I've read and many of them and have been incredibly bad. Um, they're written by gender study majors, I'm, I'm sure. And they have no concept of law. They have no concept of intellectual property law. And they have no context, content of fair use. Uh, what type of policies Wizard of Coast has already put in place, the enforceability of said policies, and this explains. And you might understand why my blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read one thing and that should be enough for you guys. Uh, car Conjurer, I'm sorry, on November 3rd, 2022, I received a cease and desist for Car Conjurer. Today, November 18th, I'm taking it down. Now, first and foremost, a cease and desist means nothing. A cease and desist is not, you know, hey, we're going to court. It's not, hey, I'm going to sue you. It is just a letter, a paralegal found a template on and gave it to you. It cost Hasbro nothing to send that cease and desist letter. Maybe the time that it took the paralegal to forward it over. I am not afraid. I am personally, again, hey, we all have different levels of tolerance and risk. I have received many cease and desist letters in my lifetime and I have ignored all of them and only one of them sued me. <laughs> Which is, again, so you understand how many people sent me cease and desist letters I just ignore them because if you really you want to go to battle, let's go to battle in court, right? Let's not, you know, send hateful. Like it's almost a cease and desist letter to me is like a attorney sending me a text message saying, "Oh, we might sue you." All right, I might sue you too. Is my <laughs> response to that text message. Um, anyway, I wish there was another way. I tried everything I could. The fact is, Wizard wants it down, and so I must comply. I have never complied with anything. Wizard of the Coast, they tried to ban me for life. They not only tried to ban me, they actually did. I did not comply and I threatened to sue them. They, they unbanned me. I have no, you know, I understand. I was actually talking to people the other day about this. Um, if you're a non-lawyer 
and you receive letterhead and it looks fancy and it's for a law firm or people and you think, oh wow, they sent me a cease and desist, they're gonna come after me. Um, no, the, the majority of cease and desist, I mean, it's just such a bad, like any lawyer is gonna tell you, I could send you a cease and desist from watching my video. Doesn't mean that you agree with it, right? So, I mean, I don't know. I think this is weak. I actually told them I wanted to buy this website. I'm gonna run the, the website exactly the same. I'll take all liability for it and we'll see what's, and I'll see what's in coast, coast, coast and court. Because they're not gonna call me on my bluff. I know they're not going to call me on this bluff because they know I'm a lawyer. I know they're lawyers. I actually know Wizard of Coast's lawyers in the law firm they used. They're in Houston. The guy invited me to dinner one day to talk about Star Wars toys. Anyway, I initially received an email from Reynolds Law requesting that I take down my website because it uses copyrighted and trademark material from Wizards of the Coast. I responded by explaining my situation and how I believe Card Conjure respected the fan content policy, which they do. We will take a look at that policy a little later. I also asked why Card Conjure is being cease and desist, but not other custom card creators, Alibaba from China, that don't provide Wizards copyright notice, put card frames behind paywalls, have been around longer, and have more users. I was told that Wizards enforces its rights as it deems appropriate. So this argument, clearly not a lawyer. I don't know what he is, some type of software engineer, um, but so his counter is, okay, cool. Like he's doing the exact argument that falls into the honeypot trap. Oh, why did you target me? There are other people who have paywalls and this and they're making money, I'm not making, no, 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 that's not how you respond to these people. You respond to these people, I'm going to sue you, Wizard of the Coast, and then they will back off. And how do I know that? Because I have used it. In fact, I've shown it on live stream. I've shown it a million times, the whole drama behind it, right? When they send me an email of DCI number with my location of where I play my games at, and you know, and then you got the uh, Emma people like saying, oh, who plays at this place? Let's all meet him and beat him up. Just how they got the, uh, on the quarterling, right? At Gen Con at one time when they punched him in the face. Uh, ultimately, their attorney listed some examples to warrant taking down blah, 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 verbatim copying of card tax and card art, uh, messing up their legal notice by placing cardconjure.com under the right copyright. <laughs> card Conjure reproduces, displays, and allows copying and distribution of many of the Magic the Gathering trademarks and logos. Notice this does not mention copyrights, just trademarks and logos. Uh, these primarily include the mana symbol among other things, which they actually do have trademarks for, if you check it up. No one is allowed to use these trademarks without licensing, but as we all know, there are plenty of sites. So th the argument this guy's making is so nonsensical as a lawyer, you cannot say, oh, other sites are using it. Yeah, but you are too. So like, the, I mean, this is a very, I can understand why he eventually had to take his website down. He has very little understanding of the law, um, he does not understand that just because other, you can't say, oh, just because other people did something illegal, what I did was not as illegal. So why don't you arrest those people? No, no, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, so if they believe what you did is wrong, they can go ahead and go after you. Just because other people have done it, it's the enforce of bill. It's, they're scaring you. Because they, it's resource allocation, okay? They know that you're weak. And they know by just having a lawyer talk to you a little bit, you're gonna cave and delete your website. They know in China, Alibaba is strong. Alibaba goes say F yourself. We're gonna print even more proxies. Right, the proxy machine goes right. Because they cannot enforce it. So it, there are two things about IP law. One is, is it illegal? Is it not illegal? That's a question that we can talk about. The other and more importantly one, and the more important one I found out, obviously having worked in Chinese IP law firm, is the enforceability of it. Great, you have a patent, you have a copyright, you have a trademark. Good luck enforcing it in China. Good luck enforcing it in Russia. You know, I wish you the best of luck because you're gonna get effed in the butt, man. They don't give a shit. You tell them, hey, stop. All right, we'll just change our company name. Do, do, do. All right, and we're not Wizards of the Coast anymore, or Wizards of the Boast. How you like that? Oh, oh no, okay, okay, we're Wizards of the Dost. 
Oh, we got all these letters in the alphabet we can use. You shut one company down making fake iPhones in China, 10 more will pop up because they're in spite of you, run by the same people. They're like, hey man, hey, this thing must be very valuable. There's some US lawyer who's getting paid like $800 an hour trying to shut us down. There must be demand for this. So the problem with in, in, in when counterfeit goods is the people in the country of China have no idea why magic cards are valuable. They have no idea what magic cards are valuable. They don't have, so when somebody tries to shut them down, they now put one and one together and realize, oh, this is valuable. What, what people don't understand, having done IP law my entire life, essentially, because my dad's a patent attorney as well. Um, in these countries doing counterfeits, they don't actually know what a Black Lotus is. They can do some research, they can learn a little bit, but they don't have magic. They don't play magic. They don't know what it is. And if you told them, hey, this thing is $20,000, they wouldn't believe you. But as soon as lawyers start contacting them, then trust me, they do more research, they do more homework, they're going to investigate. And now Alibaba has, instead of having like one or two companies make them, they're supposedly, it seems like maybe it's like 5,000 different companies, but really it's just the same company. Because if one company gets shut down, okay, the other company will operate. So it's very interesting because the, the problem with counterfeit, not the problem, the reason that counterfeit goods on their side, so you have to think about it from somebody in China. Why, they would be like, why would somebody want a counterfeit card, cardboard piece, piece of paper with a black lotus on it? Why would they want that? And then suddenly, they, somebody in America tried to shut them down. They're like, whoa, this is like a highly paid lawyer. Why is he trying to shut me down? Oh, I have something they want. So anyway, they're picking on this guy because he's weak. That's honest to God. His website blew up, right, after the new proxies, 30th edition. Uh, I looked at his SEM rush traffic. It looks like this. So he went from basically unknown to 2,000 plus searches for car, or 1,300 searches for carconjurer.com, which is really, really good. That's why they're coming after him because, and not because that he has the most traffic, not because he's been doing this the longest, but because he's the one that has exponentially risen. And if, and that's why I want to buy this website, it can rise even more. This could be the number one proxy website if he fought back, but you know. A cease and desist really does nothing to me, but I can understand a non-lawyer, maybe a gender study major would be very upset. It would be, you know, emotionally, uh, cat catastrophe, right? They st they could the, the mental health just deteriorates, and now they can't work for six months. I could get that. Um, unfortunately, now that I'm on Wizard of the Coast radar, I've been on their radar for like five, six years. I don't give a damn. Car conjurer can't get away with it as everyone else does. Correct. Yes, the argument. Like as soon as you make that argument to a lawyer, he knows you're dead underwater. If your argument, oh, other people do illegal stuff, the lawyer realizes you have never talked to a lawyer before, nobody in your family is a lawyer, that you don't have the logic. Like the lawyer at that point in time realizes that you have never talked to a lawyer before in your life. If, the lawyer, if I was his lawyer, I would say, no, we're not making this argument, delete, delete, delete. We're not going to make this argument. It's not going to work, you know? I understand that Wizard has the right to protect its intellectual property and that fan content policy includes a clause for arbitrary takedowns. I'm just disappointed that Card Conjurer can no longer do what so many other fan sites have done. So again, he's still on this, God damn, he's still on this concept where, oh, hey, other people are doing stuff. You know why they target you? Because you're the one who will take it down. The other people won't, they'll fight. Well, we'll see. So for these reasons, I have no other choice but to take down uh, over a cease and desist. I mean, that's not even a lawsuit, my dude. Like, come on. I have to be thankful, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, he's only 20. Oh, that's why. He's only 20 years old. And his parents probably are not lawyers like my parents. Like, my parents just say, F which it goes, let's go. Um, for me, I would love to take Wizard of I've always been, uh, I've always been, you know, I have a marketing agency. If I can take Wizard of Coast down a peg, that would help my marketing agency as well. I have no fear about them because I've, I've met them. I've talked to their lawyers multiple. I talked to the Hasbro attorney. No, sorry, I talked to Wizard Coast attorney. They have their own attorney. And I talked to a Hasbro attorney. I've, and the Hasbro attorney invited me to meet him for dinner at Papa Steakhouse, which I just ate with the distributors. It was actually Papa Steakhouse. 
I said no because I felt like it was a honeypot trap. <laughs> like, oh, he's going to let me eat anything I want at the steakhouse. Um, so at the end of the day, I think uh, a lot of times people, non-lawyers are very scared about legal things when they're just like, you know, poof and smoke, right? I get it though, because nobody, he's 20 years old. He, he's got, that's why he used to sell it to me. So if he sold it to me, would I continue? Yeah, hell yeah, I would continue. And they want to go to court, I would love to go to court with them. I would represent myself. They would sue me for damages, whatever they would be. They would have to prove out the damages. I would get discovery. The reason that I want to sue them is I want discovery. I would be able to ask them information relevant to this about print runs and things of that nature and I'll all make it all public. Because at the end of the day, that's what discovery is all about. It's, you know, hey, I can ask them questions and, you know, I can enforce their ability to answer these questions. And there's a lot of questions you want to ask them and they have to give you honest responses. Otherwise, it's perjury and they go to jail. And not, these people, these, you know, fancy, I, as, as Rudy would say, ivory tower people, they're not going to no jail. That's the worst thing for them. They got kids and family you got to support. So it's sad, you know, um, do I think they would, they would have sued him? No, they, here's the thing. A cease and desist costs almost no money to do. When you start preparing for a lawsuit that costs hundreds of thousands. If I know Wizard of the Coast, which I do, they're very cheap, right? They don't pay their cosplayers. Remember with the <laughs> Christine Sprinkle, they don't pay nobody. They don't pay their judges. They don't pay community managers, like the Twitch moderators. No, nobody's getting paid under this system. They're expecting volunteers to do it for free. Um, there's no way they would pursue a lengthy, very expensive, very public trial on proxies. Now we can talk next video. We can talk about the legality of proxies. If that's something you guys are interested in, maybe live stream it, but they took him down with one cease and desist because he's a 20 year old kid. If I had that website, I say, just go F yourself, <laughs> senior court. And I guarantee you they wouldn't touch me because I had the same scenario before because I would counter sue. And again, I'm happy to drag this out as long as they want. It's just great PR for me, right? And my company. So why not? So anyway, um, you know, like, I, I guess like, I'll, I'll give you, I'll leave you this. From an IP lawyer perspective, having, knowing how the system works, for every single time somebody sends a cease and desist, for every, let's say 100 cease and desist that are sent, maybe 10 of them. So actually every 10,000 cease and desist, maybe one of them actually ends up as a lawsuit. Lawsuits in trademark and copyright and patents are incredibly rare and they never reach the conclusion because there's always some settlement. They're very rare. Case law on this is very rare, which means that the, the trial concluded in a verdict of one way or another. You don't get to verdicts. Maybe there's a settlement. Um, this is very interesting because it has fair use. It has their fan content policy. What is fair content? You know, when Rudy puts a card up, when somebody does a spoiler, is that fair content? When somebody makes you know, a proxy with a different image and you know, who owns, like, it's very fascinating to me because it's also the NFT space, which obviously I'm the number one NFT lawyer. I'm the only NFT lawyer to my knowledge. I speak on this issue a lot. You know, DAOs, and, you know, there's an Inuyasha DAO, there's a Spice Milan's DAO. And so the idea, so like, this is not the only kid with this idea. There were plenty of kids doing massive copyright infringements on like huge levels, right? The Inuy Do you know Inuyasha has a coin and has a DAO and the, the creator of Inuyasha has no idea what this is? Um, or, you know, selling Nike sneakers, like NFT tokens of Nike sneakers and so on, even though Nike is not the one selling them. There's a lot of like different things to go. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things in the NFT space that have to be litigated in the future. I would love to be the one litigating it, but who knows, right? I mean, it is what it is. This is very interesting to me, the proxy element. Obviously, they're very upset because people call their 30th anniversary proxies. Now they're seeking vengeance on I would not be, it's so easy to, it's so cheap to do a cease and desist. I'm probably sure that all these other websites is 20 year olds talking about and complaining about that have not been taken down. I'm sure that they all got the same letter, but they're just responding to them in different time, time lines, if you will. Anyway, guys. <laughs>